Yeah, right. But imagine a city where roads silently repair their own potholes overnight and not during the rush hour, where bridges detect tiny fractures and heal them before they pose a risk, and where electronics degrade harmlessly into the soil after use. This is not some far-flung vision of a sci-fi future. This is knowing is winning, and today I'll talk about the emerging world of smart materials, self-healing infrastructure, and biodegradable electronics. These innovations are poised to revolutionize how we build, maintain, and interact with uh, the physical world. As you know, our infrastructure today faces a silent but persistent threat. Roads buckle from repeated stress, bridges corrode with age, and buildings quietly crack under changing temperatures and weight. Traditionally, we've dealt with this through scheduled inspections, uh, annoying maintenance crews, and of course, costly overhauls, an approach that is reactive and often too late. As Dr. Maria Lopez, a materials scientist of Delft University of Technology puts it, we've spent decades building our cities like static monuments, but cities aren't static. They breathe, bend and break. We need materials that evolve with them. Enter smart and self-healing materials engineered substances that respond to their environment and in some cases autonomously repair themselves. These materials mimic the resilience of biological systems. Just as human skin heals a cut or bone fuses after a fracture, these substances can patch cracks, realign structures and regain function without external intervention. One of the most groundbreaking example comes from the Netherlands, where the city of Rotterdam has been testing self-healing concrete on several bridges since 2021. Developed by Hank Jonkers and his team at Delft, this living concrete contains limestone producing bacteria. So when water seeps into a crack, it activates dormant spores. The bacteria then convert nutrients into limestone, effectively sealing the fissure. He says it's like giving concrete a second life. Instead of patching the problem, the material heals itself from within. Well, this bacterial concrete isn't just theoretical. In 2023, it was installed in a segment of, and excuse me, I gotta collect enough saliva to pronounce it in, in, in Dutch, a Norderland bridge, a busy connector known for stress fractures due to heavy traffic. Six months after application, engineers observed a 65% reduction in visible cracking and minimal need for manual repair. The city estimates potential maintenance savings of over 1.2 million euro over the next decade. But it's not just Holland. Elsewhere, in Japan, researchers at Waseda University have pushed the envelope farther with multi-layered self-healing films composed of organosiloxine and PDMS. These materials feature dynamic chemical bonds that break and reform in, in response to stress. What's remarkable, explains lead researchers, uh, one of the lead researchers, Dr. Takashi Yamamoto, and I love this last name, Yamamoto, Yamamoto, what he says basically is that it's not just their ability to self-heal, but to do so under a range of conditions. Heat, abrasion, even in uh, sub-zero temperatures, they can heal themselves. The um, you know technology is now being actually trialed by uh, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries in aerospace components, where even minor work can lead to uh, catastrophic outcomes. Of course, these advances are not limited to massive structures. Um, at the microscopic level, nanotechnology is enabling surfaces to behave like living tissues. Engineers 
are incorporating nanocapsules into polymers, tiny containers of healing agents that uh, rupture when damaged, releasing substances that polymerize and fill gaps. Some systems even mimic spider silk and plant cell membranes adapting to external forces to resist tearing. Actually, in uh, 2022, uh, NASA began testing such materials for spacecraft skins, aiming to develop the you know, hulls that can recover from micrometeorite impacts autonomously during missions in space. Smart materials go beyond healing, though. They also sense and communicate. In the United States, the I-91 bridge in Connecticut was outfitted with self-sensing concrete developed by University of Houston. Embedded with carbon nanotubes, this concrete can detect microstrains and wirelessly transmit data to engineers. It essentially feels stress and warns of potential failures before it happens. Think of it as immune system for the infrastructure, says Doc Dr. Sarah Pruitt, a civil engineer with the uh, Federal Highway Administration. <coughs> Excuse me. It's not on it not only detects damage, but responds in real time. So it communicates with people that can fix it or that should be aware of the fact or amount of deterioration. This convergence of sensing and healing has given rise to entirely new paradigms in infrastructure monitoring. In Singapore, where humidity and rain accelerate road degradation, the government has launched a pilot program combining LoRaWAN connected asphalt with uh, thermochromic polymers that change color when damaged. These roads you know, they basically talk to maintenance systems, maintenance crews, you know, logging locations and showing severity of micro cracks before they become potholes. Early results show a 40% drop in urgent roadwork over 12 months. These innovations are not just smart, they're also sustainable. By extending the lifespan of materials, reducing waste, and minimizing the need for heavy machinery and you know, chemical treatments, self-healing technologies align perfectly with uh, climate goals. According to a 2025 report from Future Markets Incorporated, widespread adop adoption of self-healing concrete alone could reduce construction-related emissions by up to 20% globally by 2035. Now, complementing this sustainability trend, um, are biodegra biodegradable electronics, uh, which is an emerging solution to the growing problem of electronic waste. Today, the average smartphone contains over 60 different elements, many of which are toxic or hard to recycle. And we, we use these phones only maybe a year, maybe even uh, you know, a couple years, and then we basically throw them away. But you know, what if a phone or a medical sensor could harmlessly dissolve into the environment after use? Researchers at Stanford and the University of Illinois are doing just that. In 2024, Stanford unveiled a flexible transistor made from cellulose and silk protein, completely biodegradable and still, and still functional in biomedical monitoring. In the words of Dr. Fiona Zhang, who led the project. Our goal is to make electronics as temporary as a bandage. Use them, then let them vanish without a trace. And I like it. You know, these devices are being tested for temporary cardiac monitors and implantable glucose sensors, reducing the need for surgical removal and minimizing e-waste in the medical sectors. The impact of these biodegradable systems isn't limited to hospitals. In Sweden, the packaging giant, and excuse me if I mispronounce it, but I believe it's called Billerud Kornsans, is collaborating with Royal Institute of Technology to create biodegradable RIFD tags for smart packaging. 
These tags collect temperature and humidity data during transport, helping reduce food spoilage, then biodegrade within 45 days after disposal. The dual benefit, smarter logistics and zero landfill contribution. Of course, challenges remain. The cost of producing self-healing materials, especially nanotech enhanced systems, can be high and a regulatory framework you know, is still catching up. Building codes must evolve to um, recognize materials that behave in ways not seen until now in traditional construction. And of course, there's also the issue of cybersecurity. As more infrastructure connects to networks, it's not just physical cracks we must monitor, but you know, also digital vulnerabilities. Yet the momentum is undeniable. Between 2020 and 2025, the global self-healing materials market has grown by 28% annually, with the largest investments coming from China, Germany, and the US. Airbus, BASF, and Arup are among dozens of companies actively piloting and deploying these materials in construction, transportation, and electronics. What all this means for the future of our cities? It means a shift from static, vulnerable systems to dynamic, resilient ones. It means fewer catastrophic failures, fewer emergency repairs, and a significant reduction in environmental impact. It means bridges that last a century with half the maintenance, smartphones that don't outlive their usefulness by a thousand years, and buildings that adapt like living organisms. As Professor Neil Davis of the University of Cambridge's Center for Smart Infrastructure puts it, we are no longer just building cities. We are growing them organically, intelligently, and sustainably. This transformation marks a new relationship between humanity and its built environment. One where maintenance is proactive, not reactive, where waste becomes a thing of the past, and where our infrastructure isn't just strong, but smart. The age of responsive regenerative materials has arrived, and with it a future where cities are not just built to endure, but to evolve. Learn something new every day. Stay informed because knowing is winning. Thank you very much.